Welcome to American Booming Businesses. Today we're focusing on learning all about the benefits of land trusts. Do you want to make sure that your heirs can pass title to your properties without being tied up in probate for years? Or do you wish to protect your property from liens and judgments? You're about to get your questions answered. Joining us today from FullCountServices.com is Land Trust Advisor. Bill Toomey. Bill, what reasons are there to put a property into a land trust? Well, Mike, there's lots of reasons. Uh, chief among them are the privacy that affords the, the owner, that people don't uh, have a way to discover who the owner is simply by looking at public records as they can when you have a property in your own name. It's listed in uh, public records of the uh, county assessor's office, county recorder's office. So the privacy is very important. The trust also protects people against liens and judgments attaching to their property uh, when they get involved in some kind of a situation, a lawsuit or a, a compliance code violation or tax liens or uh, what have you. And it also protects people in, 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 who, who find themselves uh, in, in probate. In other words, if they die, their property can be passed to their heirs without having to go to probate. This is a very, very important uh, reason to have your property in a trust. Um, many people are familiar with, with living trusts, and they do this uh, uh, form living trusts for the same purpose. A land trust goes a little further in, in, in that regard, but it's a similar kind of a, of a situation. Well, is a land trust legal in all states? L land trusts are legal in all states. Uh, sometimes people want to know if it's legal in uh, the state they live in, if there's a particular law that uh, uh, permits land trust. There are some states that actually have laws enabling land trust. Most of the states don't have any law which regulates land trust. This is actually part of the beauty of it. It does provide the privacy that you're looking for when you form a land trust. What should the trust be called? Well, that's kind of a, an interesting point. A trust can be called anything. There doesn't have to be uh, some uh, uh, a rule involving the, the naming of the trust. We have customers that name their trusts after their cat or dog. Uh, it can be name, named after the street, the properties on the Elm Street Trust, for example, or uh, the Sunrise Partners Trust. Uh, we have people that name them silly things, things that really mean nothing, the XY1221J Trust. And they do that just as a way of making sure that Nobody can see what is uh, involved with the trust or it doesn't lead to any particular owner or beneficiary. So it can be really called anything that you can fathom. Okay, what information will appear in public records? The only information that appears in public records is, is the grant deed that's recorded with the county uh, recorder's office. The grant deed will show the name of the trust as well as the trustee. Um, so it'll say the property is owned by the Elm Street Trust John Smith trustee. Is the trust document public? No, the trust document itself is not public. Only the grant deed is, is publicly recorded. The trust document is a, is a contract. It's an agreement between the beneficiaries and the trustee and it is the private business of the beneficiary. No one sees this. It is not recorded with the county recorder. It is not registered with any governmental agency like the Secretary of State where you would record uh, a file a, a, a form with the Secretary of State and have to give updated information every year for uh, the officers or the partners, uh, the members of, a, of an LLC. So this is totally a private agreement. Uh, the only copy of that goes to the beneficiary, and unless he gives it to somebody or shows it to somebody, nobody else will know it exists. Will people be able to sue me and attach a lien to my property if it's in a trust? No, because you don't own that 
piece of property. So if there's a lawsuit that's against you, it will not directly affect that piece of property. A judgment attached to you does not attach to a piece of property. Or if you have multiple uh, pieces of property, it won't attach to any of the properties that are in a trust. Should all of my properties be in a trust? Absolutely. I, I think that is very, very important. And, and Mike, they should be in separate trusts as well. They should actually have one piece of property in one trust. Okay. And can an LLC be the beneficiary of my trust? Absolutely. And this is a very, very powerful asset protection tool. You actually come up with a two-level uh, 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 suit of armor, really, if you will, when you have property that's in a trust, and that trust is essentially owned by an LLC. So you have two levels of protection. You have anonymity uh, on the land trust level, and you have legal entity protection on the LLC level. Bill, what's the difference between a living trust and a land trust? Well, first of all, Mike, they're, they're similar. They're both what's known as inter vivos trusts, which means simply that the trust is made uh, between living people. The agreement is between living people as opposed to a testamentary trust, which is the kind of thing people would set up to, say, uh, fund their favorite charity, uh, re medical research, or the university, or a scholarship after they die. So that's a testamentary trust. A living trust is the kind of thing that people use to protect themselves and their assets while they're alive. It typically involves all of their assets, and it's not as private since usually it'll be called the, for example, Bill Toomey Living Trust. If a property is owned by the Bill Toomey Living Trust, it's pretty obvious to anyone who looks that Bill Toomey owns that particular piece of property. With a land trust, it is a more limited purpose. It does not necessarily include all of one's assets, as it includes only one particular piece of real estate, and it's named something innocuous so as not to tip off who the beneficiaries are. And who should be the trustee? The trustee can be any adult and people use uh, different people to be their trustees. It can be anyone they like. It could be a, a, a relative, adult child sometimes makes an excellent trustee. Uh, it can be uh, a business associate. Uh, we suggest, if it's at all possible, to use an out-of-state uh, person uh, with a different last name than your last name. How long does it take to get the trust set up? It only takes us a, a couple of days in, in normal circumstances. If somebody has a, a rush uh, situation, they're ready to close title on a new uh, uh, property they're purchasing, then we can even do it faster than that. How do I order? Well, you can order online, Mike. We have the, the website, or if you want to call our office, we're open every day, and uh, we can take the order right over the telephone. Uh, we take all credit cards and uh, either do it online 24-7 or give us a call, and we'll get it started right away. Bill Toomey, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks, Mike. I sure enjoyed being here. Thank you very much for having me. For more information about land trusts, call Bill Toomey, 1-800-420-9938, or email Bill, info at fullcountservices.com. You can visit Full Count Services' website to order your kit. That's fullcountservices.com.